want to turn to some developing news. Ukraine has cleared a major hurdle in its long-standing desire to join the European Union. This political support is very important for the fighting spirit of Ukrainians. The EU has granted Ukraine member candidate status. It's the first step in the process to become a full-fledged member, but that could take years. Meanwhile, Russia's war on Ukraine is now in its fourth month. Yulia Kovalev is Ukraine's ambassador to Canada. Hi, Ambassador. Good to meet you. Good to have you here in studio uh, on our program this evening. Hello. It's my pleasure. I, of course, want to start off on this news about uh, candidacy for the EU. Uh, I had heard in the past few days President Zelensky almost warn that if this does go ahead, and, and he had hoped that it would, uh, that you can expect Russia to retaliate in some capacity. Is that your expectation as well? So first of all, I would like to say that it's a, it is a historical day today for Ukraine. As we were advocating for the candidacy to the EU members since 2004, so nine years we are on the path both for the reforms, but actually today we are fighting for the EU values. And, uh, you know, just before I was coming to your studio, I was talking with the soldier on the front line, and he was calling me and congratulation with this decision. But unfortunately, our con conversation disrupted because of the new airstrikes started the place where he is on the front line of the East. And he said that we are here to fight for EU. We are here to fight for our country being a real EU member in the future. So, uh, you know, the people of Ukraine have been striving to, to EU, have been striving to build the democracy, to build a rule of law. And this decision today, it's a recognition of all our efforts, but it's also being us Ukrainians paying a huge price of thousands of lives for, for these EU values. Do you think that recognition would have happened at, you know, at this time if it weren't for what Ukraine is enduring right now with this war on Ukraine? I think we world deserve the status that we got just a few minutes ago uh, with the decision uh, of EU. And of course, the war brings the huge price for us for this decision, because as more Ukraine was moving to EU and cutting all ties with Russia, the more Russian regime became aggressive. And actually, for us now, it's a, it's a choice of our future to be in the EU member. And we actively started this path back in 2014, when hundreds of Ukrainians were killed in Maidan Square because of the strive of the nation to be a EU member. And now we are paying much higher price for our future, for our European future. What is your level of concern, though, that that price might get even higher, given what you just laid out, right? So circling back kind of to my first question, which is Ukraine and the EU and its connection has already instigated Putin in the past, as you mentioned, in 2014. Uh, you know, do you expect Russia's aggression, if it's even possible to imagine, to, to increase based on this decision, which, as you mentioned, happened just moments ago? Um, it much will depend on how much and how quick will be the support of the weapons. So what I've heard just a few minutes ago from the soldier on the, uh, on the front line, they are here to protect Ukraine and that they are there to protect you. The only thing they need uh, to, uh, to battle with Russians uh, on the east is the heavy weapons. So this much will depend on how much our allies will support us with the weapons. Uh, I think for tomorrow will be the fourth month of the full-scale war. This is a very tough anniversary for us, as we've lost already thousands of the people. And the only th we showed the world the courage, so everybody knows and sees the Ukrainian soldiers and all Ukrainian nations, which is bravely fighting for our country. And the only thing we need now is the more weapons supply. And that will help us to liberate the territories which were temporarily occupied. And you can, cannot even imagine, the Russians are torturing people there on those territories. So we need these weapons just to stop the tortures and the war crimes that they are doing on these territories. So uh, for your question is, we are ready to, uh, to any of the uh, development of the situation, but there are definitely 
the military support of Ukraine will help us. Can I ask you in a specifically Canadian context about that? Uh, because Canada has supplied, you know, uh, uh, different amounts of lethal aid, different types of, of lethal aid. I was speaking to an MP, I think it was just last week. Uh, his name is Rustem Umarov, who was here visiting, talking to government officials. He said that there is a request for uh, labs from Canada. C can you confirm that? And can you update us on where the discussions are at? He was saying that he had not so far received a response. Actually, we... We have already got a significant part of the military support, and there is uh, already in the budget committed $500 million for the military support of Ukraine. And yes, we do need loves. Uh, loves, it's not only love as a feeling, but we also need loves as a heavy Light vehicles. 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 Yes, yes. Like a, yeah. but it sounds as a love. Uh, so we need these uh, light armed vehicles. And they are, are you going to the get them? Have, has the government said you will? Uh, so. Uh, this is under the consideration and we are asking for that. And there are other types of the equipment, usually that's not for the public because as more we announce as Russia can, can attack their supply and so on. Uh, and there are other things going on both for, for the lab, the labs, there is a discussion. Uh, we, are, we are definitely need them and we definitely need other types of, uh, of the weapons and uh, artillery, which we are constantly working with the uh, Canadian government on their supply. And what is your level of confidence, I guess? Like, how, my, you know, my feeling is, and my understanding, I guess, is a better word as I read through and listen to you, time is of the essence, right? We know how uh, difficult the battle in the East is right now. Do you anticipate that you will have a positive response from the government soon? We do expect. This is, uh, this is actually our work on, uh, with all of the partners and allies. Times matter for us. So each day of the delay unfortunately cause the lives of our soldiers on the front line. Um, so we do uh, expect uh, that uh, there will be more support as, uh, and we do appreciate already committed the significant uh, support in the budget for that. This is a very crucial for us and we, uh, we thank to the government for that kind of the support. Okay, Ambassador, I'll leave it there. I'm out of time. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.